So hello and welcome to this new tutorial. I'm Dennis Fassbender from Blender Physics and this time I'm back again with a, um, so a, bit, a little bit different tutorial uh, about Storm. Storm is a software I found on the internet and it is a simulation tool that can be used for granulate simulation as example. And I would like to show you a way to use this together with Blender. And what we have to do here is we have to make a basic setup for the scene. So let's delete everything we have here. Oh, like that. So, so I would say let's uh, have the default cube. And we want the default cube to rotate and move from there to there. In let's say in a second or two. Maybe something like this. So um, put it here. Uh, from the side view make sure it is placed on top of this level here so this is very important because in storm uh, this is the ground level too and um, yeah what we now need to do is to make the animation so press i on the keyboard set a keyframe for location and rotation and now let's think about how long it could take from there to there so i, I do it while moving it and uh, then say one two three ah, three seconds is too long so one two Let's say one and a half seconds. One, yeah, one and a half seconds. So one and a half second would mean something like I have 25 frames per second. 50, fra 50 frames would mean two seconds. So I have to uh, use something between 25 and 50. And I think I like the 40. So I go to 40, move it here, press R, uh, R and Z. And let's say we have a rotation from 180 degrees. And then press I location and rotation and we have a basic animation that can be imported into storm later and i'm going to show you how to do this but now we need another thing first and this is our sand we need a holder or uh, let's say something no no it's not a domain object it's a box where the sand is inside so let's take another cube and make this our sand so size it to something like this and this and make it small enough um, please remember the smaller or thinner this is and uh, the easier it will be to simulate all the particles inside yes and from the side view also take a look that it is on top of the ground like this here and um, let's check if this is long enough yes looks fantastic it is long enough yes and this will be a uh, hidden later when we are going to render it because it's not required we just need it as a holder for all the sand or granulate particles and yeah so this is the basic setup this is what we have to do first before going inside a uh, storm we will use the alembic cache so hit f3 on your keyboard and type in alembic and we're going to export alembic and let's find the place where we are going to uh, place it. I have a Storm FX example here. So while being inside here, let's call this cube ABC. Make sure you have enabled this field here, selected objects, because we do not want to export all the things, because that would mean that all the things will be colliders in the scene, but we only need the cube to be a collider, so we need to export that isolated from the other things. And we have uh, 40 frames, so the end is 40 frames. Okay, then press export alembic. We need to export the sand, so again press F3, say export alembic, um, go again to our folder here so you can see here's cube and we will call this one sand one we will uh, later make sand two and uh, you will see why but now this is sand one uh, make sure selected objects only is enabled and again we now we only need 40 frames or let's say 100 frames because maybe we want the simulation to be some longer and i'm not sure what uh, uh, alembic cache does uh, with sequences after this number of frames here so let's say 100 so we are safe okay export alembic all right so this is storm uh, it looks like a 3d program and yeah yeah it's a little bit something like 3d 
uh, program because you can do a bit of modeling using boolean operations and uh, yes yeah, so on but it's not done for rendering or something like this it's a simulation tool and what we are going to do now is we prepare this tool for a granulate simulation and this is really more simple than you thought because you just have to click on add object at granular system and now this thing has been set up for granulate systems and now we need two things a source that gives us sand inside and a collider and we have these objects made with blender let's click on add source um, what we can do now is while the source is selected we have this where is it? Let me think. This file pass field here on the right side. And what we now need to do is just copy the pass where our cube is into. Copy and paste it inside here. For path. Backslash. And then the file name we have given for our uh, sand object. It was sand1.abc. Enter. Now you can see this is the object we have created with Blender. And now it's inside uh, our simulation. Hit space to play the simulation and you will see that there are some uh, new particles inside. Yes, and this will be our simulation. So there are a few things we can set up now. Something like while source is selected. Um, I'm, I have to say the truth is I'm not sure about every single parameter here because i'm really new to this program but but i found out this the first thing we have to do is set this to zero because this will uh, avoid to generate uh new particles all the time okay so and we have to increase the resolution because you can see that these things are jumping a bit in the beginning and i think it's because it's a low resolution simulation and uh, the first particles are touching the ground here and this is why the simulator makes them jumping up here so what we can do is go to granular particle system and here's the resolution and be careful while increasing this value here because this can end up in very long computing times uh, let's start with something like 20 what is really it's a double so let's hit space and see how uh, s much slower it is but you see it's uh, also sta more stable yeah okay so uh, just for you to know why this jumping was there in the first frame but uh, for me it's too fast for this tutorial i'm jumping to something like 15 yes and what we can now do is we add our animation to have a collider and this is simple too we click on add collider so we have a box here this is not blender's default cube this is storm's default cube and we can change this geometry the same way like we did it with the source here so this is selected uh, find the path this is the path and uh, double click paste the path again we have it copied copied it to the clipboard backslash and we called this one I think it was cube.abc and now you can see we have our cube here and there's nothing we have to do now we can just hit press uh, we can just press space and you will see our simulation is working so this is really simple this works in a few steps that is great so but there's one question why are these particles here uh, jumping all over there by hitting space the first time um, I figured out it is because inside of this box are particles and we have high velocity and they will jumping all around. So the next logical step would be to cut a hole into our sand object uh, with a boolean. I think it is possible using a storm itself but we are going to do this with blender of course and jump back into blender and we are here. So the um, our sand object is selected let's go to the modifier tab and say boolean and difference is okay click our cube a bit make it big enough so it is big enough to cut a hole into the sand object let's make this um, invisible for the viewport yes this is what i'm going to what i would like to see so select this and now i'm going to apply this so now the hole is inside there without applying that would mean while this thing is moving here it would uh, cut a hole into the uh, 
into the sand object and that hole will move with the object and that would be seen in the storm but we only need the hole for the first frame and the sand that is around should be pushed by our cube yeah so okay uh what we have to do is we have to size it back to the original size original means we have uh 111 so this is the original and we have to re-export this so F3, Alembic, and that is what I uh, told you before. We are going to call this one Sand2, just for you to have two different files to uh, switch between to see uh, the difference. And to show you how easy it is to replace this model here, because we just have to make this a two. Okay, so we are ready now for the simulation press space and you will see how beautiful this is looking like and it's really fast okay what i did not find out till yet is if there's a way to cache this or to bake the simulation so when uh yeah when doing this here you will see the uh particles are st still flying in the air and you can uh, move the box here and press simulation and it will continue there and there's no playback option or something like this so i'm not sure about how this could work maybe because i'm new to this program and i don't know but it could also be that there is no baking function however uh, i know that is not required because the simulations are really really good Yes, this is high precision, it's high quality, and we can directly export this. And let's go on. To do this, we need to import this simulation into our uh, node window here. And the way to do this is hit the right mouse button and then find the and then find the import system here. And import system needs the system name of our granite solver system, and this is this here. Double click. Control C to copy and paste it here. So now we have imported the particle system in our nodes, and there we can also add a new node that is called write. We have to enable this by clicking this here. Okay, and we have to set a file path. And I would say we take our project path, make a new path inside. Let's let's say this is our sim yeah just sim go inside and copy the complete path here and paste it here okay that is not the most beautiful way to do something like this but it works so maybe in future versions the uh, developer will make this better but it works backslash and now let's think about a name for this i would say uh, the name for our simulation could be granulat Granulat, I don't know how to spell this in English. Granulat, underline and four times hashtag. Because hashtags tells the uh, tell Storm that we are going to export in sequence. And the sequence will be a limbic cache. So just type ABC. And now Storm knows that we are going to export an alembic image sequence. It has automatically uh, added four times a zero because it knows we are on frame zero and yes all we have to do now is save the thing of course and then when you have saved this just hit simulation and while simulation is working it is writing the result as a result of the simulation into the files and you can see it when taking a look into our folder where you can see with each simulation frame um, a new file will be generated Yes, so, and when all uh, frames has been simulated, we can go back to Blender to import it there. And it's the same procedure, F3, type in Alembic, but this time not export, because we're going to import the system. And we have to go back to our folder and find the sim path, and now we see our Alembic cache files here. So, let's sort this this way. Take the first one. Uh, tell Blender that this is a sequence and then click on import Alembic. Of course, we have to disable this object here because it's not required, as I told you in the first minute of this tutorial. So let's disable this from the viewport as well as from rendering. And now you can see our simulation here.
Press spacebar and see it. It's awesome. It's so, so great. I love this kind of simulations. And that is possible to use Alembic with Blender. This is fantastic. But one thing here is, these are only points. They are not renderable. So what we need to do is we add geometry to this. And here's a very important hint. I have to tell you, we have made a low simulation, a low resolution simulation. And that means everything will work okay inside Blender. But I have also tested some higher resolution simulations, imported them as a limic, and that works. Everything works fine till we are adding geometry to it. Then Blender is on its end. I think Blender is not done for this kind of simulation or not for really, really very high simulation stuff. Uh, or I'm, I just don't know how to do it in a better way. So uh, please guys, if there's someone out there who knows a better way to solve these issues, uh, please tell me, that would be awesome. Uh, but for now, you have to live with the easy way I know, and this is adding an object like, let's take a cube as example, and um, I would scale it down to something like 0.01, down to this here, and while this is selected, hit shift on your keyboard, select our sensibilization, press Ctrl P, and just parent it as object. Nothing more has to be done. Uh, you can find it in the outliner here. There's our cube. And now, while storm points, this is our imported sand or granular simulation, is selected, click on the object properties, and then go to instancing and click on vertices. And when you click on this, you will have a performance drop on your system because, I have done it now, because all the small cubes are duplicated to all the points here from our uh, simulation import and that means now it is renderable. We can now hide the uh, imported cache files from Storm by clicking this and this checkbox and now we have only the cubes visible here. Okay, so you can play the animation and yes, the playback might be okay. Yes, it, it looks okay and this is what came out then. Okay, so there are no materials or shaders now. It's just for this tutorial, quick and dirty. And yeah, uh, you can scale up all these cubes now while selecting your small cube. But as I told you, the performance is really, really low because we have many or much geometry here inside. So while this is selected, you can press S on your keyboard and scale it to something you like for your rendering. Yeah. So I like something like this and that is all. So you can set up a color or some, whatever you make it red, make it green, make it yellow. However, that depends on what you would like to see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's looking like this. And um, one trick for me is when you're going to use a higher resolution is to hide this from the viewport. This is the only way. So you can work in real time with your scene. Uh, if you would like to add um, materials to your uh, little cubes, you can select it and press the comma on your keyboard. Then the system will automatically zoom into this cube and you can um, you can fly around and take a look and switch to render preview and can take a look how this thing is looking like. You can add reflections, whatever you would like to do. And uh, press zero to jump back into your camera, play the animation and now check how it is looking like. And if you don't like what you see, close your render window and make your changes on this cube or in your scene or in the background or whatever, but never enable this uh, viewport setting again, because as soon as you enable this, um, Blade Blender might be become uh, useless. Okay, I hope you understood the basics. I hope you uh, liked this video. Uh, I hope I will find more time for more tutorials in the future. So if you like this video, uh, please leave a comment here. Click the like button. Uh, subscribe my channel. And yes, thank you for watching. Goodbye.